doping levels. Comparison with cigarette smoking. Dr. Fasalino from Greece. Thank you very much, dear chairman. We, the title of the study was we wanted to investigate the effects of electronic cigarette use on coronary circulation blood carboxy hemoglobin levels and compare this to the effects of cigarette smoking. We have nothing to declare as authors, however our institution was funded by an e-cigarette liquid manufacturer. We, none of the authors received any financial compensation from the uh, sponsor or from the institution. We know that e-cigarette is a relatively new product with tobacco harm reduction. It has been developed due to the inefficiency of currently approved methods for smoking cessation. We know that nicotine replacement therapy products have a lower than 6% long-term success rate in smoking cessation. And even oral medications in the most uh, carefully planned trials have a less than 20% success rate. Uh, however, it is a new product. We cannot perform any kind of long-term studies to evaluate the safety from long-term use. Therefore, therefore, we have to do several other short-term studies or evaluate the pathophysiological mechanisms that uh, are related to smoking uh, re related disease and then check what is going on with electronic cigarettes. Smoking, we know it's the major, it's the most preventable risk factor for cardiovascular disease, particularly associated with uh, acute cardiovascular events. Concerning this study, uh, we decided to study uh, the effects on the coronary microcirculation because there were already several studies published which showed that smoking has an immediate adverse effect on coronary blood flow and even passive smoking uh, has such an effect. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to evaluate the immediate effects of electronic cigarette use on coronary microcirculation and on blood carboxy hemoglobin levels which are uh, used to detect carbon monoxide exposure. The materials was of course a cigarette, an electronic cigarette device which was a second generation device consisting of a battery which you can see here, uh, the atomizer so called which is the uh, part of the device where the liquid is stored and where it is evaporated and uh, uh, this is a refillable atomizer and the, the electronic cigarette liquid with 18 mg per milliliter nicotine <coughs> was a mistake during the abstract uh, uh, submission where we re reported that it was a 9 mg per milliliter of nicotine. The methodology was uh, to assess uh, coronary flow velocity reserve by using uh, intravenous infusion of adenosine at a dose of 140 micrograms per kilogram per minute for two minutes. And we also assessed coronary vascular resistance index, uh, which is an index of the resistance to the blood flow to the coronary arteries. The protocol design we included uh, 60 participants divided into two groups. One group was, uh, were smokers, daily smokers of at least one year, at least 10 cigarettes per day, and the other group was electronic cigarette users who had completely quit smoking for at least one month and were daily users of, electronic cigarette, of an electronic cigarette device. They were healthy without any risk factors for cardiovascular disease besides smoking and without uh, any clinically evident uh, this is. Uh, we asked them to visit our clinic after an eight hour abstinence from smoking, uh, e-cigarette use, and additionally alcohol and food intake. We performed the baseline coronary flow velocity reserve and uh, vascular resistance index measurements as well as carbon carboxy hemoglobin measurements. Then, for the group of smokers, we asked them to smoke two cigarettes in 15 minutes. Uh, on another day, uh, and it was a randomized crossover design. Uh, we asked them to use an electronic cigarette with the 18 mg per milliliter nicotine concentration for 15 minutes, and we did a repeat measurement. Uh, for electronic cigarette users, it was of course unethical to give them the e cigarette, they were all, the, a tobacco cigarette, they were all former smokers, so we just used the, an electronic cigarette device similar to what was used for smokers. Uh, I have to stress and mention that. The uh, repeated measurements were performed 20 to 30 minutes after smoking or e-cigarette use in order to avoid the hemodynamic effects of nicotine because you know that heart rate and blood pressure has an, an acute a direct effect on the uh, 
velocity of uh, blood flow to the coronary arteries. Therefore, uh, we know the acute hemodynamic effects of nicotine and that would cause an increase on the baseline uh, measurement of uh, velocity, which would uh, decrease the flow reserve. In order to make sure that I will show you later the results of the uh, hemodynamic measurements. The baseline characteristics of the two groups were identical, uh, no difference in their smoking duration and uh, cigarette consumption. Uh, the electronic cigarette users had a mean period of nine months using the devices, uh, and they had quit smoking for about eight months. Uh, the hemodynamic measurements, ejection fraction and uh, cholesterol levels were similar in both groups. Uh, concerning smokers, before and after smoking two cigarettes, you see that there is no hemodynamic change. Of course, I'm talking about 20 to 30 minutes after smoking the cigarettes, that's why. Uh, there is no change in systolic, diastolic blood pressure and heart rate. Uh, similarly, after using the e-cigarette device and after 20 uh, to 30 minutes also, no change in hemodynamic parameters. And the same for the e-cigarette users before and after using the e-cigarette device. Once again, 20 to 30 minutes period from the time they use the device until the repeated measurement. Here are the results. Coronary flow velocity reserve in smokers after smoking two cigarettes we saw a significant 16% decline in coronary flow velocity reserve. This is in line with previous studies, which in fact have shown that the difference is much higher. There are studies showing approximately 25 to 30% decrease. Probably we were close to the 30 minute uh, interval between smoking and repeated measurement. That's why the difference was not so high, but still it was statistically significant with a p-value of less than 0.001. For coronary vascular resistance index, uh, there was an increase in the resistance to blood flow of 19% post smoking two cigarettes. Now, the same group of smokers after the electronic cigarette use, there was absolutely no difference in both coronary flow velocity reserve and in coronary velocity reserve uh, vascular resistance index. Uh, both baseline and post use values were similar for both measurements. The e-cigarette users, which used only the electronic cigarette, we didn't give them tobacco cigarette to smoke, they, they also showed no difference in coronary flow velocity or vascular resistance index before and after using the, de the device for 15 minutes. For the whole sample, so for this is the, these are the results for all 60 patients all 60 participants because they were healthy before and after using the e-cigarette device, we see that there is no difference in both flow velocity reserve and vascular resistance index. Blood carboxyhemoglobin levels. There was a significant difference in uh, carboxyhemoglobin levels even at baseline between smokers and electronic cigarette users, which I must remind you, they were all ex-smokers. They were not smoking. They were not smoking for at least one month. After smoking two cigarettes, we, we observed a significant elevation of uh, carboxyhemoglobin levels <coughs> in blood, while after using the electronic cigarette, no difference was found in smokers. Similarly, in electronic cigarette users, there was no difference in carboxyhemoglobin levels before and after using the electronic cigarette device, indicating that there is no combustion from the electronic cigarette and no carbon monoxide is produced. In conclusion, smoking causes immediate adverse effects on coronary microcirculation, as we know from previous studies, and our study is in line with these studies. The electronic cigarette use has no immediate adverse effects on coronary flow velocity reserve or coronary vascular resistance and no carboxyhemoglobin elevation was observed after electronic cigarette use, confirming the absence of combustion. Therefore, this study adds to currently available evidence which supports that electronic cigarettes are significantly less harmful compared to tobacco. And unfortunately, there is no way to perform any long-term studies because it's a new product. Monitoring of consumers for several years are needed in order to determine the long-term effects of electronic cigarette use. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Professor Salino, for your very interesting study. Now this paper is open for discussion. Any questions from the audience? <coughs> Dr. Fasolino, and can you conclude from your paper that the nicotine itself has no effect on the microcirculation of coronary artery? It seems that it does not nicotine itself. Of course, I told you that, and I mentioned, I specifically mentioned that we had a period of 20 to 30 minutes between measurements, but. The, the difference that we would observe earlier would be due to the hemodynamic effects of nicotine, which is the elevation of uh, systolic blood pressure and heart rate. We know that coronary flow velocity depends on pressure rate protein. So the hemodynamic effects of nicotine during the first minutes after the use, uh, they cause an elevation of the baseline uh, coronary flow velocity. Therefore, the ratio of the hyperemia to the baseline velocity would decrease. But that wouldn't be a sign of coronary <coughs> microcirculation. Even if you ask uh, to uh, uh, just walk for a little bit or have a short run, and then you measure flow velocity reserve, you will find it's lower compared to baseline because the physical activity will increase the baseline flow velocity. So that's why it's a common practice in, that, in this kind of studies to have a period of 20 to 30 minutes between using the tobacco cigarette or the electronic cigarette and uh, making the, the repeated measurements just in order to avoid the acute hemodynamic effects of nicotine. Hi. Can you reveal the name of the company that sponsors your study? Yes, it was Flavor. And are you aware of just how many different companies now have an e-cigarette available? Yes. So, uh, hundreds. Hundreds. And they're not FDA regulated in the U.S. of course. Of course, they are not regulated in the U.S. yet. Uh, the FDA tried to regulate them as medications in 2009. Uh, they lost the court battle and they also lost in the Supreme Court. Uh, so now they will be regulated probably this year or earlier next year, probably as a tobacco product. And we have some evidence to suggest that formaldehyde has been found as a byproduct in some of these, uh, these liquids. So, is that an issue with your particular company that you that sponsor the study? Is there just nicotine coming out of this? No, no, no. We have to make clear this. It's not only nicotine that's coming from the electronic cigarette. That's right. Uh, and it's not only nicotine that is present there. Uh, formaldehyde and some other chemicals like acrolein, which has also been found, they are produced from the heating process and the evaporation process of the liquids. They are not present in liquid form, but they are present in vapor, as you said. The levels found in an electronic cigarette are from 10 to 400 times lower compared to tobacco. The same or even higher difference were observed with uh, nitrosamines. All the studies that have been done to check for nitrosamines in the samples, they found approximately 500 to 1,000 times lower nitrosamine levels compared to tobacco cigarettes. Therefore, we must make clear that the electronic cigarette is not a product that is recommended for everyone as a new habit. It is recommended only for smokers as an alternative to smoking and with the goal to reduce the smoking consumption or to completely quit smoking and not for the general population. That should be clear. Uh, the presence of such chemicals are indeed found in very low levels. We have to wait and see for a long period of years to see if there are any long-term complications from that. But we can say confidently that the levels are by orders of magnitude lower than smoking and most probably uh, it will be beneficial for smokers to switch to electronic cigarettes if they cannot quit by other methods. Thank you. Uh, did, do you, did you have the opportunity to get any subjective comments from the smokers because this is one product as an aid to quitting altogether that simulates a behavioral component of holding something in your hand and sucking away at it. Did you have any subjective comments from your participants? Uh, about this? I don't know right now and I'm checking it right now. It's approximately uh, five months after the study was performed. But approximately, I think, four or five smokers have quit smoking with electronic cigarettes. Although our study was not uh, a study to evaluate 
the smoking cessation rate. And in fact, when we uh, we, the participants, we didn't uh, tell, tell them anything about the electronic cigarette. We said that we wanted to check the coronary flow after smoking. Uh, so they didn't come because they wanted to try the electronic cigarette. However, I know that some of them have quit. I, I haven't checked the whole sample yet to, to have a, a more accurate figure of that. Back in the point of view, do you have any data about the effect of electronic cigarette on exercise tolerance, or do you test the exercise tolerance of patients yeah. that you use? Uh, we we don't cigarettes? have we don't we don't have objective data on that. We have only data from surveys where the vast majority of users report beneficial effects on their exercise uh, duration and capacity. Uh, these are all uh, published uh, studies and surveys. We don't have any objective measures, for example, to echo spirometry before and after uh, to check if there is any difference. Uh, so I think it would be a very good idea to do such a study. Yeah. The problem with such studies is that you have to start when someone is a smoker and you don't know the, uh, how many of the smokers will quit smoking afterwards. <coughs> Thank you very much for the yeah. presentation. We thank the audience.